to the 6-2 notes on solving systems with substitution. Uh, this gets a little bit harder. Same concept as what we did in 6-1, except for now we're going to use substitution instead of graphing. Okay. Um, big key here is, is making sure we got the steps down. So steps one, when necessary, and you don't have to do this all the time, but when necessary we're going to solve at least one of the equations for one variable. It also doesn't matter which variable. Step two, we're going to substitute that uh, resulting expression from step one into the other equation to replace the variable. Then we're going to solve. And then step three is we're going to substitute that value back into either equation and solve for the other variable. So here's what that looks like. Right here, we have y equals 2x plus 1 and 3x plus y equals negative 9. We can see that step 1 is already done for us because right here, y equals 2x plus 1 is already solved for y. Okay, so we substitute that, and it's, it's, it's pretty simple. We substitute this value right here. Yikes, my goodness. We're going to substitute this value in for y. Okay, so we do that. And, and then we solve for x, okay? Then, once we're there, we substitute that negative 2 back into either equation, whichever one looks easier, um, and, and we get our answer. You can also always check your answer by putting it in your graphing calculator if you have that. So, with that said, go ahead and take a second here, try 1a, 1b, get some answers, um, and, then, and then we'll check and make sure they're right. So go ahead and get 1a and 1b right now. Go. All right, you've unpaused, hopefully, for your answers for 1a, you got 1, negative 2. Remember, our answer is going to be a point. So if you have x equals 1 and y equals negative 2, you want to rewrite it as a point, because that's our answer. And then for 1b, you got, you got negative 3, 1. If you got those, awesome, go ahead and move on. If you didn't, try them again, see if you get the same answer. And if you still don't, make sure you make a note of it, star, asterisk, question mark, something by that in your notes, so we can go over how to do those in class. Number two, if, uh, if a variable is not isolated, then we're going to have to rewrite the equation so that it is. So you can see here in number two, uh, we have x plus 2y, and you have to choose which one you want to use. The first one looks like the easier one to solve for x, because we can just subtract 2y from both sides, so we get this resulting expression. We're going to substitute that in down here for the x. Substituting it into parentheses is always a good idea. We solve for y, we plug that in, we get x. Um, really not that complicated. Um, just just an additional step. So go ahead and I will let you know on 2a, you should solve that one for y. And on 2b, you should solve that one for x. Go ahead and try those. See what you get. Um, when you unpause the video, the answers will be there. So make sure you have answers before you unpause. Go ahead and try those now. All right, you've unpaused. Hopefully you got 4, negative 1, and 3, 4. Again, um, if you didn't get those, I would suggest trying them again. And if you still don't, then then let me know. Uh, make a note of it somewhere so we can we can go over those in class. Uh, similar to a lot of things we've done lately, we have the opportunity to have uh, no solution or infinitely many solution problems. What those look like uh, with systems is if we if we substitute and we plug something in and we end up with a true statement that is negative 12 equals negative 12, then that's called an identity, and there are infinitely many solutions. Okay. In the same regard. Um, if we do a problem, sorry, hold on. Uh, if we do a problem and we end up with an untrue statement, we could have no solution. So if it was, um, going back down to this one, if we were to do this same problem, but somehow we were to get like negative 11 equals negative 12, well, that's not true. So there would be no solution, okay? So go ahead and pause the video here and try to get answers to 3a and 3b. Go ahead and pause the video now. All right, you've unpaused, hopefully, for this first one. You got no solution. And for the second one, you got infinitely many solutions or infinitely many solutions. Okay? Again, if you didn't, try them again, uh, and, and we'll go over them in class if you're still having trouble. All right? But there's the two answers there. Real-world problems, this is just coming up with the equations. Usually that's the hard part for us here. Um, and then solving one of them for either variable and then plugging it back in. So this is working with uh, a C equaling the number of car stereos, T is the speakers, and we want to know um, how many of each item were sold if this scenario were true. So we set up the equations. C plus T is 125. That's because a total of the stereos and the speakers were sold in a week. And then here's the money for each, um, how much they cost, and then the total cash. And so we use that to set up our system. If you look at number four, uh, the New York Yankees and the Cincinnati Reds had won a total of 32 World Series. So I'll tell you right now, the equation there will say Yankees 
plus Reds equals 32, okay? The Yankees had won 5.4 times as many as the Reds, okay? The Yankees had won 5.4 times as many as the Reds. So if we take the Yankees and we multiply, and that's equal to 5.4 times R, okay? So those are our two equations. Let me make those bigger so you can see them. Y plus R equals 32 and Y equals 5.4 R. Go ahead and solve both of those. And, and when you unpause, I'll have the answers up on the screen. Go ahead and pause them now. Solve them now. Pause the video now. All right, so here's our answers. The Yankees uh, had won 27 World Series, the Reds 5. Of course, you, you good Yankees fans out there know that this isn't true anymore because the Yankees were up to 28, folks. 28, the best franchise in sports history. Um, but at the time that this was written, as of 2009, okay, the Yankees had just won 27. Uh, but there's, there's how we do it, all right? Um, that's it for the notes. Uh, hopefully that wasn't too hard. This is going to take a lot of practice. So what I would like for you to do is try these seven, okay? Uh, try these seven and really come in with these done so we can talk about them. Um, and then we'll give them some more practice when you get here. All right, see you next time. Bye.